Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things. Jeremiah 33.3. <laughs> yes, it is. My name's uh, Reverend Gerald Canock from uh, Tiffin, Iowa. And, uh, Mary Canock Ministries. Yeah. And this, of course, is uh, the host of uh, Great and Mighty Things, Reverend Bob Butler. And we're right in the right in the middle of, of some place we really didn't want to break, but we had to break because of time. So That's right. So we're kind of going to kind of back up and, and hit a few of the things that we couldn't cover in the last program. Right. <laughs> so and we, we really want you people to copy or tape the programs with your VCR. Or D, I don't know if you can do it with DVD or not, but if you can, do it. Uh, and then go back and glean uh, some of these things. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the things that makes this program practical is the fact that we do inject different testimonies of experiences of some mm -hmm. of these things. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've shared some, I've shared some, and Kendall in the past has shared some with, and uh, for you people who don't know, he's our regular co-host. Uh, Rev. Jair is our guest host for these uh, last programs. But uh, that gives validity to what we're talking about, mm -hmm. I, I believe. And, yeah. and people with, can pick up on it and say, well, you know, I've done stuff like that, or, mm -hmm. you know, I can do that. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you can speak good words. You can speak God's words. Yeah. And, uh, of course, get the blessings for that. Yeah, we can either speak God's word or we can put our foot in our mouth and speak our own words. <laughs> and plant some weeds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we wanted to pick up uh, in Mark 11... 22 and 23 and 24 and we'll go down through here we'll go down through here a little bit because uh we just started in uh i'll just go ahead and read that uh mark 11 22 and jesus answering saith unto them have faith in god or as we said in the last program it's also translated in some translations to have the god kind of faith or the faith of god I, i've heard i've seen both of those yes. translations yes and we do have God's faith because he has given us his faith. And that's a point you brought out in the last program. Yeah. We, we really need the people to understand that. Mm -hmm. They say, well, I don't, have, I don't have enough faith to do that. Yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, you have your own faith, but you also have this faith that God has given you to accomplish the things from, for his word, from his word, that he desires to be accomplished. And, and you can do that through his faith. You, right. you don't have to think about it and say, well, I wonder if there's enough faith in those words to it. If it's God's word, then there's faith, God's faith is involved That's in it. That's right. God released his faith by the words he spoke when he created this right. universe. When he said, light be, the faith that he had was released through words. And that's why words and faith are so so important that they are, are understood that they flow together yes. in, in that regard. So it's it's something that uh, people really need to grab a hold of so they understand it. So it says, Have the God kind of faith or have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, that doesn't leave anybody out, right? No. Okay, that whosoever <laughs> shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Let's go on to 24 here. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now that's Jesus speaking. Now, yes it is. And, and he's bringing out two very important points there. Uh, you notice he didn't say, well I pray to the mountain. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, other scriptures and we'll find out in another chapter where we have been giving the authority in Jesus right. name to cause things to come about mm -hmm. uh, and so the first in verse 23 he's, he's not praying to the mountain he's commanding the mountain mm -hmm. uh, that's a command who's supposed to say unto this mountain you're commanding that mountain be thou removed and cast into the sea They're not only uh, you're not giving it an option you're telling it what mm -hmm. has to happen that's right and, uh, and, of course, theologians, we can get into a theological discussion about this and what all is involved, but the principle here is we're commanding something to happen mm -hmm. according to God's word, uh, and that's an important part of it. But then he goes on to verse 24 that you read, then he says pray. Mm -hmm. Now, he started out commanding something, and then he comes along and he says, now pray, and this is what you pray. Mm -hmm. And believe you receive. Believe you receive. Yeah. That's, that's because these 
two verses go together. Go together. Absolutely. You can't separate them. No. Uh, in in regards to the overall picture here, uh, when when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, he he didn't cuss it. He cursed it and said, uh, "No no man will eat fruit from you." That's an important point you just said. I hope people picked up on it. There's a difference between cursing and the curse. Mm -hmm. uh, cursing is speaking words that are not good words. Yeah. Uh, swear words mm -hmm. in, in common language. But the curse of the law in Galatians 3.13 right. and 14 is talked about, goes back to Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. yeah. tells what the curse is. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when he cursed the fig tree, he was relating back to that curse of the law in the word, not swearing at the tree. He was yeah. telling the tree, here's your future mm -hmm. because of, and then yeah. the situation of why. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Uh, and you yeah. said, the way you said that really uh, triggered because people said, well, Jesus swore. No, he no, didn't. No. He didn't swear because he said cursed. He doesn't mm -hmm. say that he swore. We use the word cursing. Well, that guy like, needs cursing. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, maybe not. He might be just flat out swearing and not cursing at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the way you term terminology. <laughs> But, but in this, uh, let, let me read uh, another translation here, the uh, modern New Testament. Jesus, as a matter of fact, embrace this God life, really embrace it, and nothing will be too much for you. This mountain, for instance, just say, go jump in the lake. <laughs> no shuffling or shilly-shallying, and it is as good as done. That's why I urge you to pray for absolutely everything, ranging from small to large, Include everything as you embrace this God life, and you'll get God's everything. <laughs> That's a different way of saying That's it. That's a different way of saying it, but yes, I, I it think is. it's really neat. And then, uh, well, he didn't lose any of the principles. No, <laughs> didn't lose any of the principles. But uh, you know, uh, and go jump in the lake. I mean, that's kind of a phrase that's been picked up. People that's, can understand that. It, it's a way of telling someone, get out of here, you yeah. know, and, and no. <laughs> uh, you, you got no place here. And that's really what they're showing here. This mountain, and of course, when we ta uh, speak of mountain, uh, he wasn't just literally talking about a mountain, but we can look at obstacles, uh, things that are in our way, uh, hindrances. Yes, uh, that's exactly you know, right. That, that are there that need to be removed so we can embrace the God life yes. and do what God tells yes. us to do. It, you know, financial lack, that, that would jump right out at me uh, because if there's a financial lack and you don't do something about it, you're not going to succeed in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You have to have money to do things that's right but the money whole, isn't the only thing the whole society runs on that yeah the, the this world runs on it that we live in uh, we're in this world we're not of it but we're in it we have to uh, know uh, how to, to to operate in it but if we don't take authority over the financial lack and speak to our finances we're not going to receive finances and that's that's just a principle. There's there's some good points here, and there's one in in, in uh, Luke six thirty eight thirty nine mm -hmm. talks it says give and it shall be given unto you pressed down shaken your other yeah. shall men yeah. give unto your bosom. Yeah. Uh, another place it says the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the for just. just yeah. So the monies are out there, mm -hmm. and and God says hey, these people need to be willing to re, uh, give so that it can be multiplied back to them. Mm -hmm. For their giving now there's some uh, there's been a lot taught about uh, finances and some of them have bordered on yeah uh, scam mm -hmm. or uh, well other words that would fit that but uh, the principle there is when in, G, in uh, Psalms it talks about it says when you give to the poor mm -hmm. you're, you're the same the as lending to the Lord and he will repay now yeah. how does he repay well, Luke says he repays because other men will see the good works of giving mm -hmm. to the poor and they want to get involved. And you can see different ministries, how they've blossomed by but, putting yeah. that very thing yeah. into work. Yeah. And uh, their ministries have been blessed. The people they've been ministering to have been blessed. Yeah. And the people that have supported them have been blessed. Yeah. 
because of that very thing. And it's a principle. And, and it all comes about by the words that were planted to get it all started. Mm -hmm. That's true. And here, it's a matter of commanding and a matter of praying. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't they don't supersede each other. They complement each other. Mm -hmm. okay. But a lot of people will say, well, let's pray for something. Well, really, instead of praying for something, they should be commanding something. Mm -hmm. uh, commanding is not praying, and praying is not commanding. Yeah. So we need to learn the difference. Mm -hmm. and it, it, there is a difference. If you don't believe that, go to the dictionary and see mm -hmm. what it says. Well, when you think the, about, like I said before, when God created this universe, he spoke he and spoke. released his faith. He was commanding. Okay. He wasn't praying. He was commanding. Exactly. In exactly. that regard. I mean, of course, God, exactly. God doesn't have to pray to himself. But, no. <laughs> but the principle is that he, he commanded Something. light be yeah. and light was. Yes. Uh, you know, and it, it's still continuing even to this day and this hour and this second. It's still expanding, what, 186,000 miles a second? That's, you know, that's what the scientists say. The, the right. universe is still expanding. So the, the original uh, time that, that uh, God said light be is still in effect. You know, so it hasn't changed. Wow. <laughs> that, that boggles the mind when you stop and think about it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, there's, there's a rabbit trail there, but I, I, yeah. I think I'll not try to go down that one right now. But okay. well, there's a lot of things there that could be said. Uh, Therefore, I say any whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive and share them. Now, a lot of people have taken that verse out of context. Because he says, therefore, I say unto you whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a believer... And you understand what it says in, this, in Ephesians about desiring, you'll know that you should be desiring the same things that God desires. Mm -hmm. and, and when you desire what God desires, He is going to make sure that you have it. Yep. Uh, if you don't know what He desires, then how are you going to pray that He meets your desires? Yep. Too many of the people have taken this verse and say, God, uh, whatsoever things I lust after, mm -hmm. give me. Yeah. And uh, that's not His desire. Yep. <laughs> We can pray in three different ways. Uh, before we move on to the next section, is there anything you want to say here to kind of no, cap it off? Just or? right in then. Okay. We can pray in three different ways. Now, we can pray silently in a silent prayer, which, we, which many in the world would love to have the Christian community do so they wouldn't have to hear us. God hears the silent prayers, and we lift him up. Uh, silent prayers are good, but verbal spoken prayers are better. Mm -hmm. uh, God can read our thoughts, the devil can't. That's a basic truth that we can uh, show Scripture to prove that out. But uh, then we can pray out loud in our known language, English, Spanish, etc. God, all the people around us, and Satan are able to hear and understand these prayers. Now, if we pray silently, the devil can't do anything about that uh, because he can't read our mind. So he's got to be moved on what we speak out. Mm -hmm. Now, we want the devil to know some things. That's why we want to pray out loud. Mm -hmm. uh, the devil knows the word. <laughs> he probably knows it better than a lot of people, Christians do. But uh, when, when we speak our prayers out loud in our known language, uh, that's a good thing because now mm -hmm. we're planting those seeds because words are seeds. And your yeah. thoughts aren't your seeds. Your words are. Mm -hmm. You can have good thoughts. In fact, what did we say a little earlier in one of the other programs? We need to control our thoughts yeah. before we speak, so we speak out the right things. And that's that's a basic, uh, you know, how would we say it? There's some basic things there that we really have to understand to really make this do what it's supposed to do. Well, you know, in Philippians it says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ yes. Jesus, yes. who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal, equal with God. With God. Uh, but... The, let the mind be in you. Let yes. this mind be in you. The mind of Christ is what it's talking about. Yes. So the thoughts that Christ has, we should, we should have. Yes. And Absolutely. we can we can know the thoughts of Christ and know the thoughts of God, the Father Himself, by reading what and, Jesus. and understanding and then speaking right. the the words. Now. You don't have to quote the King James verbatim. <laughs> no. You know, no. Uh, you well, can you use, proved that. You, yeah, you can use any translation that you want that, that are close. Uh, some of them are paraphrased, and some of them, you know, aren't completely accurate, but they're they're very close. But, you know, to to speak, um, 
and you know Charles Caps was probably oh, the yeah. the first uh, uh, first one I heard <laughs> one that that ever really explained yes a lot yeah. of this stuff and it's just phenomenal uh, what uh, you know what he's done the, the power of the tongue and all the different books that he's he's written too but just to to know that the words we speak have power and have influence. Uh, I, mean, I can say things that influence you either in a negative way or, or a positive way right. by the words I speak. If I say, well, Bob, I don't like you, you because you're bald headed. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of room to talk, but, you know, <laughs> but that, that's a negative way of well, saying it. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and that's not conducive to a good relationship. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're bald or not to me. Well, you know, it doesn't matter to me. So, <laughs> but but see, you you got a there's a point come up here. It's, a lot of people say things like that that really are not relevant to anything. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not relevant to your relationship. They're not relevant to God. They're not really relevant even to the devil. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like we was talking about a little bit ago. The, their words that are there, and if there's any faith in them, it doesn't doesn't produce too much. Yeah, it, it might produce for an instant. Well, I don't like the fact you called me bald. Yeah. Well, to me, it doesn't make any difference because I always tell people I have all the hair I need because God said so. He knows every <laughs> he's, hair. he's already counted the ones that I he, lost. That's <laughs> right. He knows every hair on your head. And he probably knows why you lost them, too. <laughs> oh, boy. No, we don't get off too many rabbit trails there. <laughs> no, I don't produce, pursue, pursue that one too far. Oh, boy. Thirdly. Uh, we can pray in the Holy Spirit a special heavenly prayer language that God gives us and we can and he does hear those prayers God is the only one who is able to understand what is being said when we pray this way now this is the tongues that's talked about where we're praying to God mm -hmm. not the tongues that come out in a church meeting where God is speaking through someone yeah. to get a point across to some people Now I needed to explain that because a lot of people have been mistaught that there's only one kind of tongues. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's only one kind of tongues in the sense that it's the Holy Spirit speaking, but yes. what is the thing behind it? Mm -hmm. uh, then I go on, where did I leave off here? God is the only one who is able to understand what we have said when we pray this way. The people around us can hear us when we pray audibly, and so can Satan. But this language cannot be understood by them. Mm -hmm. Satan can understand understand our English, Spanish, French, and any other earthly language which we, which a person communicates, but he cannot understand our heavenly language. Now, I've got a footnote here. <clears throat> All these other languages, and if you talk to people who teach the languages, English is far from being a perfect language. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other languages that are a lot better uh, to communicate with than English is. Uh, but when you pray in the language of tongues, it's a, called, referred to as a heavenly language, mm -hmm. uh, even in, in the word and some different commentaries use that phraseology. The speaking of tongues is by the Holy Spirit, and you gotta remember the Holy Spirit is God, he's part right. of the triune God. And since it's spoken by the Holy Spirit, it is the only, the only perfect language. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't do anything with flaw in it. God is perfect. The Holy Spirit, since he's part of God, he is perfect. Now, we may hear somebody speak in tongues and we say, well, it sound like much to me. Sounds like gibberish. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't understand it. So, you know, that guy, he must be, you know, there's something wrong. Yeah. His, his mind went tilt. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the same. He says the same syllables over and over again. Uh but you got to remember, it's, when it's the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, it's the perfect language. And it's not meant for you to understand, unless... You pray the interpret. The pray to interpret. Yeah, that's right. Or in a case where tongues is coming forth to a congregation that has to have interpretation. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, uh, and here again, we got to be careful and we got to add this, because the devil counterfeits God's... Whatever God does, he tries. God counterfeits it. He tries. And so there are some people out there that may be praying in some gibbish that is instituted by the devil. Maybe it isn't true tongues. Uh, so we have to have the gift of interpretation or uh, discerning of spirit sometimes mm -hmm. to realize where is that God involved or is it just man listening to the devil? Mm -hmm. uh, nevertheless, Tongues is a language. They are words. Now, they may not sound like words to us uh, when they're a syllable. 
Uh, we refer to a lot of tongues as, as syllables. Mm -hmm. uh, but to God, it, it has a meaning. I prayed uh, when I first got spirit filled, I had a very limited tongue. Mm -hmm. And one day going to work, I asked God, I said, what does this mean? And he told me. But in another case, using those same syllables with other syllables, the meaning could have changed. And, and I'm quite sure it did change. So when we're talking about tongues here, this is an area where a lot of people get into trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to add anything in here before we move on? Well, I think that... And I didn't finish that paragraph, by the way. <laughs> no, no, I, I know you didn't. But uh, when we speak of uh, being baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, it's not a, a language that you know. That's right. It's a supernatural spiritual language which you uh, have not learned but have acquired because the Holy Ghost has enabled you to speak. Those words. Those the, the, the words, yeah. the syllables. Uh, now, uh, I have uh, at different times I've given public tongues and then interpretations. And uh, I've had people say that they understood some German and there was some German at one time another one was Spanish but mm -hmm. you know it didn't register at all with me you know as far as what what it was because I was concentrating on as I was speaking I was waiting for the interpretation yeah. and so I wasn't thinking about what it sounded like but other people have come up and said you know that that sounded like something in Spanish. I, I got a phrase in Spanish, yeah. and, and I said, "Well, you know, that's that's that fine. That can happen. That can happen." But uh, normally, what you hear, you may not understand. But someone who has, has the interpretation, it won't be a direct translation, that's but it will that's be right. the interpretation uh, of what God is saying. Uh, many times that I've been in meetings where someone is given a tongue and someone else is interpreted. I may not have exactly the same words, but I've got the same flow from the Holy Ghost where it was going and what he was meaning by it. But he, he uses people in that regard. He takes their personalities, their intellect and everything else and begins to form that to speak the things he wants spoken. So that, that, that's a, just another avenue of, of tongues. You said you said another thing there that we we need to pick up on, uh, the word translation versus interpretation. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, interpreting something is different than translating it. Yeah. Now, you can take a word in the English language and interpret it several different ways. Mm -hmm. The same word. Yeah. But when you translate it, you translate it into some other language, and there again, you may be able to interpret it into yeah. several different meanings. Yeah. But, well, but the difference is translating versus interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I made that clear what I'm trying to get across here is one English word mm -hmm. can be interpreted yeah. several different ways. Or you can turn it around with, uh, with agape and phileo. You know, that's right. two Greek words that we use as love. Right. You know, but there are two different distinct words yes. in the Greek with two different meanings in that regard so but we translated but we translated those to one word yeah to one word and so. that's what we were talking earlier about the language is not being yeah. correct or, or not being yeah. not being perfect i shouldn't say correct because they are correct but they're not perfect mm -hmm. one of the one of the things too that uh we might just well i think you're going to touch on it here there there are times that we have to pray for an interpretation of our tongues and that's scriptural uh chapter 14 of first corinthians deals with that uh, when we're praying, you know, we pray that we interpret. So God can, you know, as we're praying in tongues, especially in intercession, he can give us the interpretation so we know better how to pray, what we're praying about. The last part of that verse or uh, paragraph I didn't read, though, is important because there's a point here that needs to be brought out for Christians. The one, there is one very important reason to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We who are baptized in the Holy Spirit do not speak in our heavenly language to let others see that we are something special. Yeah. Uh, we do it so that we will have an avenue to God, direct communication to Him that Satan cannot tamper with or mess up. Mm -hmm. Now, it isn't to say 
well, I'm a better Christian than you are because I pray in tongues. Mm -hmm. so there's been people in the past that have used that as a club yeah. to beat other Christians, and, and that's wrong. And I think, right. you know, I think they're listening to the devil when they start giving that type of, of uh, mm -hmm. presentation. But I wanted to get that in here because yep. uh, we're not saying we pray in tongues that it put, makes us better than the next Christian. Uh, it's available to every Christian. That's right. And that's what we want to see is everybody that, and, that wants that, desires that. They need it, you know, they really do, in order to embrace this God life that we're talking about. Well, that's why I think a lot of Pentecostal churches, people have been called full gospel. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because true. it does give you another avenue that Christians need. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, unfortunately, there's, a, there's thousands of Christians that don't speak in tongues, yeah. that are just as much Christian as I am. Yes. Uh, but love God and, and serve God oh, absolutely. and, and uh, witness for God and things like that. And but, do great things for yeah. God. But they do it on a limited basis because they haven't. Now, a lot of cases, it's because they have never been taught that mm -hmm. it's available yeah. to them. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, there's a lot of people, theologians, that have come along and said, well, you know, that's of the devil. Well, yeah, the devil, if you go to Africa, you can find tombs over there that are of the devil. Mm -hmm. Because the God, God created it, and whatever God created, the devil likes to copy or try mm -hmm. to. Yeah, one of the, one of the important things that I think about speaking in other tongues is that the devil can't understand no what you're praying about exactly. So if you're praying for your family, he has no way of trying to get in there and intervene Disrupt and stop what right. you're praying for exactly. So as I do this a lot, I pray for my family. I pray in tongues. Uh, because I don't want to tell him what I'm thinking, what I'm wanting, and what I'm doing. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit knows that. So he's negated. He's out of the, he's out of the picture. But if I'm verbalizing that in, in, uh, in prayer, oh, God, you know, save brother so-and-so or save, save sister, you know, well, you know that type things, of thing, yeah. those are all well and good. But then the devil knows that he can go and, and work, work on them that and person. work against that. That's right. Exactly. And that, that's one of the things about intercession, uh, which uh, is a part of my ministry, that, that uh, you know, that just flows right into that. I, I do the same thing. And, and the, the thing about that that I like is that you can see God move on behalf yeah. of those people. Yes. And, and a lot of times you can ask for the interpretation for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that will not come in an audible way. No. That will come through your, your soulish realm, your mind, your will, and your emotions. He'll, he'll speak back to you or maybe even in your spirit, man, yeah. uh, give you the, the interpretation mm -hmm. so that you know what you were praying about. Yeah. Uh, then the big catch here is don't blab your big mouth and speak that's, it out. That's right. Because <laughs> you've negated praying in tongues for the yeah. person by doing that. That's right. Anyhow, I, I just threw that out. That doesn't. <laughs> no charge for that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we talked about praying in tongues and, and praying for the interpretation. Uh, pray for the understanding. Yes. And. Uh, we don't always have to understand our prayers, especially right. if we're interceding for someone. Yes. Because God knows what needs to be done, and he just needs a vessel here on earth to sow the seed. Exactly. And that, that's the, the point I wanted to bring out. When God moves on you by the Holy Spirit to intercede for someone, you are planting seeds on their behalf. Absolutely. And those seeds, then God can begin to work in their lives, in that situation, to bring them closer to him that's that's really his long-term desire is to draw them closer mm -hmm. and if we are speaking those type of words uh then he has the ability to go in there that's why i said earlier you know that that satan tries to stop what we pray right but when we pray also the holy spirit and the ministering angels are there too they're going to defeat him but they can be hindered in that just, regard. Just, well, there's examples in the Bible where yeah. that happened, case, just like what you're talking mm -hmm. about, where the devil hindered, but he couldn't stop. Couldn't stop, yeah. Uh, 21 days from Daniel, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> the one that comes to mind that most people yes. have heard about. Yep. We'll let you end this program. you got less than a minute to... Well, we got less, we got less than a minute. we got about 30 seconds to wrap <laughs> it up here. Our director is going to be <laughs> point, point pointing her finger at us. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue with this uh, program and uh, or next program, uh, we're gonna jump right back into it. Yes. But, uh, if there's any need that you have, uh, the 
I'm sure they'll have the thing on the screen there that shows you how to get a hold of Reverend Bob. And, and uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Amen.